Certain books I read for different purposes. Some books are for pure inspiration. Some books are mostly to learn something. Some books are for pure entertainment. Some books are kind of like an escape, which I guess will go more into the entertainment route. And today's book is a book that is purely for inspiration. I mean, it's entertainment as well. It's an enjoyable read. But David Sedaris's A Carnival of Snackery, which are his diaries from 2003 to 2022, is one of, no, it's the most inspiring book for myself that I've ever read. If you're watching this, it's a good chance you know who David Sedaris is. One of the most prolific American writers in history. And he released a first edition of his journals or his diaries, which I have done a video about before. That is Theft by Finding. And those were from 1977 to 2002. These diaries pick up from there. So from 2003 to 2020. And the difference or the main difference is he was successful in these. He was successful in all of the years of this 2003 he wasn't as successful as he is today or as he has been for the last 10 years, but he had already had success. He was no longer a struggling artist. He showed in Theft by Finding a lot of the framework and the groundwork he put in to become who he is today. And then he took that up in a carnival of snackery. And in my opinion, showed off a little bit, but not showed off in a bad way, but showed off all the work he did in Theft by Finding, the fun he's able to have in a carnival of snackery. Like the amount of travel he's able to do, the multiple homes he lives in, the different countries he lives in, his partnership, and how much that's expanded, his ability to buy people gifts, his ability to go shopping whenever he wants to. Just a completely different life than a lot of Theft by Finding had. Because Theft by Finding had a lot of his grinding, a lot of his poor and broker adventures. Now that he has money, it is it's so inspirational. With that being said, let's get into the review. I finished this book on November 20th, 2022. So it's been a few years or a good amount of time since I finished it. It took me a while though. This is one of, if not the thickest book that I've actually personally ever read. I mean, it's a lot of, it's, it's a lot of diary entries. If you guys wanna see let me put this mic down. If you're able to see that, it's literally just not even a lot of them full pages. Some of them multiple page diary entries and the book goes to 566 pages. So it's not a small book. It's not a quick read. It was something that I would take a few pages at a time or not a few, but like 10 pages at a time. And I would alternate it with another book too, because it's not the same since it's just jot down journal entry, jot down journal entry. I would go by year. So sometimes I would read from 2003 to 2005, let's say, and then read into another book that had just different information because it's a different type of book. It's literally his inner thinkings, his journals, his stories of what happens day to day. But it has more than it did in the previous book because he now meets so many people because he's constantly touring, he's constantly appearing in front of people, he's constantly talking to people, especially up until um, lockdown type stuff. So it really has some great insight into his life as a successful writer, which is why it's so inspiring. And obviously this is, I have the hardcover here. A lot of his books can be found in used bookstores for not very much. Um, I think I have all of them now, I may be missing one. But whenever I see them, I pick them up because they're typically not too much. And so let me get into my main takeaways. My first main takeaway is if you haven't ever seen your ideal life, keep looking. I've felt like in books, I have discovered lives and lifestyles and job possibilities that have opened my eyes so much that I never thought existed. And I'm so grateful to pick up a lot of these books. And so to qualify that even a little bit more, I, as a child, I hadn't really seen too many jobs that I was ever interested in doing. Like there are very few things 
that ever looked interesting or intriguing or a way that I would really want to make my money. And until I read, started reading David Sedaris like three years ago, I hadn't really seen the trajectory in terms of something that seemed like a dream, like something that would be amazing. But living how he lives, in terms of getting to travel, getting to speak, getting to do all these things, seems like a dream to me. And reading a book like this, a collection of his day-to-day -day life, and really seeing how it breaks down, and obviously, it's not every journal entry, it's ones that he selected. But with that being said, it's so many years and so such a wealth of information that there's enough that you can get the gist of what his day-to-day -day is like. And that's gold. Because imagine if you wanted to be a basketball player and Jordan and LeBron had written down their day-to-day -day every single day and were able, you were able to map it out. That's kind of what David Sedaris is. He's huge in the writing space and being an author. And he really helps people like myself explore what it's like and even dream about being a successful writer because it was cool to see him kind of at my level at death by finding probably a much better writer but at least my level in finances and my level in the type of jobs he was doing and stuff like that but it's also aspiring to see him in his successful role with all that work that he had put in paying off my second main takeaway is that little things add up I have taken his master class and he talks a lot about just writing daily and David Sedaris does a lot of little things. He's written plays, he's worked with other people and other stuff. He's written obviously in the New York Times, he's done, not obviously, but that's another thing he's done, written in the New York Times, The New Yorker. He's podcast, radio, these little things have added up to him having such an interesting story and have so many different stories that he has to tell and he's constantly writing them down. And even little journal entries like this have added up to him having two successful books of journal entries and that's just been something he's been doing, writing just since his teens or his early 20s. So just journal entry by journal entry, passage by passage, sentence by sentence, word by word you create the type of person or writer or artist that you want to be. And having a book full of journals or diary entries really stresses that to me. The fact that he has all these diaries after being so successful, another takeaway I have is don't quit what got you there. Writing in his diary on a daily basis and getting the words down and understanding how he felt, felt about stuff and taking notes, writing down jokes he heard, writing down interesting facts he heard. That's what got him to being a successful writer. And he's been able to sustain his success by keeping up the process that he did in the beginning. I feel like that's very difficult for an artist as you start to travel, as you start to become big, as you start to realize how good you may be. It's easy to get complacent and get lazier or to be like, I don't really need to do that process anymore. And so I feel like it shows a lot of his humility as an artist to continue to stay in his diary, to continue to write out what he's feeling day to day. Even if nobody's watching, even if nobody cares about what he's writing, he's not really doing it necessarily for money. He's not really doing it for prestige. He's doing it because it's a part of the process of him being the best writer that he can be. and. It's just what he's going to do. And so I think that's very admirable. Um, when you, in something to remember, when you achieve your goals, don't give up on the process that helped you achieve those goals. My next points are to be honest and to have fun. He lives a life to where he's able to have fun, he's able to shop, he's able to travel, he's able to do all these things. And he's honest about how he feels and the reality of what he's doing. He's honest about the places he lives, he's honest about the places he travels but he's still able to appreciate and enjoy the life that he's living while being honest. I feel like a lot of people see being critical or having an opinion about something negative and that's not necessarily the case. You can still be enjoying it. You can still be living a full life, but there's some aspects that you kind of want to talk about, some aspects that you kind of want to discuss. I'm a lot of that mode of, yeah, this might be great, but that doesn't mean it's perfect and that doesn't mean there's not something that we can discuss about it. And I really have that in common with him. I feel like there are probably a good amount of people like, let's just focus on the positive aspects of it. I'm not that person. 
Let's focus on all of it. Let's take the positive. Let's take the negative, And let's talk about what it really is. My last two points. The, I mean, he's one of my favorite writers, so I'm going to have a good amount of points. from And from a book that's 600 pages long. Don't forget about your family. David Sedaris has gotten big. And it's made his life more interesting that he has family. I, I think that might be something that people overlook. Is that by staying close to his family, by talking to his family, even family that's difficult to talk to and difficult to handle, he is a more interesting person because he has these different facets of his life in terms of friends, family, professional life. It's not just single dimension. He can talk about his father, even how bad the relationship may be. He can talk about his mother. She had already passed by the time all this had come out. And so... The fact that he included his family and is so vulnerable in his writing is what makes the writing so good. And the fact that he writes these things down. A lot of people wouldn't write down a criticism about their father, or write down a criticism about their mother, even though he doesn't have very many, or write down um, the pain that they're feeling and stuff like that. So just to write these things down as strength and then to put them out later is a whole nother thing, but... My last takeaway is just to write. If you want to be a writer, if you want to tell stories, write things down, share them, and you're going to have to be a little bit vulnerable. And sometimes writing it can be kind of painful. I know from my own experience, but David Sedaris still writes it even though it may not even cast him in the best light. He may look like an asshole, he may look judgmental, he may look critical, but he's writing honestly. And he's writing. <laughs> And so lastly, so I can finish this video up, who is it for? It is for fans of reading about real life because it's journal entries, so it's day-to-day -day real stuff that's happening. If that's your cup of tea, this is perfect for you. Aspiring writers, I think it's important to have aspirations in life. Like if you want to travel around the world, if you want to sign autographs, you want to do these things, look at a person who's doing it. Get Take from their example and be able to learn from that and be able to use that as a part of your process so i think david sedaris gives away a lot of good free game in this book if you really like kind of sort through it and i have so that's something else um people who just want to journal if you want to see how journaling can be done like what do i talk about like if you want to journal what, what should i be talking about what should i be writing about what is he observing day to day what should i be looking out for as a writer just as a more observant person I think this is a great example of um, a great journal, a format, if somebody's looking for a way to journal. Humor fans, David Sedaris is a funny dude, and he's going to have a lot of humorous takes throughout the years that this is, throughout the 17 years, he sees and hears a lot of funny stuff that he tells us about. And so that's who I think it's for, obviously, David Sedaris fans, but... It, that's kind of neither here nor there. Like, if he's an author. he's not. It's not like when I do, like, memoirs and it's like, if you're a, a Richard Pryor fan, you should know. It's like, he has, what, 10 to 12 books. And if you like David Sedaris, you already kind of know what you're getting into. Moving forward, what I'm taking away from this is to write. Write and then write some more. And whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's about family, whether it's personal, whether it's about friends, whether it's about whatever, and you don't have to put everything out. But write, understand how you feel about it, and see how you can turn it into an art that you're cool with sharing with other people. Guys, A Carnival of Snackery by David Sedaris. If you like David Sedaris, please put in the comments below what your favorite book is. Also, feel free to hit the subscribe or follow button depending on where you're hearing slash watching this. It's been another episode of GP's Library. Go open a book, guys. I'll see you guys next time.